Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the deciduous forests page in your flipbook. Remember that these are statements that you should be able to make about your work. My flipbook is very neat and easy to read. I neatly colored in any illustrations with great detail, and it's clear that I took my time to make my flipbook reflect my learning. The information in my flipbook is 100% correct. I've included many details from the Lincoln Think, and I've put what I've learned clearly in my own words. and I've included information that goes above and beyond what is required. My flipbook contains no errors in spelling and grammar. So in summary, your, your work should go above and beyond just the bare minimum. Okay, let's take a look at this page that gives information about deciduous forests. A deciduous forest has all four seasons, winter, spring, fall, and summer. Each season lasts about three months. So I can already see some key words that I could take from the text and put them into my T-chart. Many trees are being cut down for construction, firewood, farmland, and the development of cities and towns. These are clearly problems that are facing the deciduous forest and the living organisms that live there. So I can label that information in my flipbook and return to it when I'm making my T-chart. And this is called deforestation. When this happens, animal and plant habitats are destroyed. Animals living in deciduous forests must be able to adapt or change to deal with the ever-changing seasons. Some animals will migrate or travel to a warmer climate in the winter, and other animals will hibernate or sleep through the winter. Okay, let's take a look at what we've learned so far. Okay, so far I've learned that deciduous forests experience all four seasons. I've learned that the living organisms that have their habitats in a deciduous forest need to be able to adapt to the changing weather. I've learned that some animals might migrate or travel during the winter, and others might hibernate, which means take a long sleep during the cold winter months. I've also learned that there are serious problems facing deciduous forests. And the biggest problem is something called deforestation, which is when people cut down the trees for their own purposes, such as building cities and towns, using the wood for firewood, or needing the land for farmland. So now, I'm not going to put this into my own words because I want to leave you plenty of space to use your own creativity, but this is an example of keywords that you could use to then put the information into your own unique creative way of expressing yourself. Then continue on reading on the other page to learn more details about deciduous forests. Okay, so on this page, we're gonna keep reading. Deciduous forests must have enough precipitation during the year to support the growth of large plants and trees. One thing you can do above and beyond what's required is compare and contrast the different biomes that we're reading about. Here we're learning that in contrast to a desert biome, Deciduous forests receive quite a bit of rain, and that enables large plants and trees to grow. Deciduous forests often have cold winters and warm summer, summers. It's not uncommon for the temperatures to dip below freezing during the wintertime. Since trees and plants lose their leaves in the fall, these leaves fall to the ground and quickly decay or break down. 
This makes the soil rich and full of nutrients. I can make an inference here, and that would also come under the category of, coming, of going above and beyond what's required. When I read that the soil is rich and full of nutrients, I understand that that's what makes this land so desirable for farmland. So that's one reason why deciduous forests are in danger of deforestation. Because their soil is so great for farmland, they're in danger of being destroyed so that people can increase the amount of crops we can grow. Okay, so my suggestion is just continue on like this, take notes, see if you can do any comparing or contrasting on this page, or see if you can draw an inference or a conclusion using the information that you're reading. Both of these will go a long way towards boosting your score towards that four excellent category.